Welcome back, my name is Guy and this is the second video I'm doing on a series of building a round table. Last time I made these, which are the legs, and if you missed that I'll leave a link in the corner so you can go take a look at that later. This time I'm going to be making these, which are the aprons or skirts of the table. Obviously they're curved. There's a shop on maple veneer on both the inside and outside. I use a very interesting process called bricking to make these. Now down below in the description of this video, I'm going to leave a link to my blog on the finewoodworking.com website. And there's also a link to give you access to an article I read on finewoodworking.com that goes into a lot of very, very good detail on how to do this bricking process. Now in this video, I'm going to do my own take on it, and uh, there's a lot of work to do, so let's get to it. So this is the template I'm going to be using to make the skirt. Obviously, I'm going to make two of these to make the skirt go all the way around the piece. Normally I would do bent laminations on this, but I can't because I can't have any spring back. It needs to be perfectly round for the joinery to work correctly. So I'm going to be using a method called bricking. And what bricking is, is it's taking layers of curved pieces, forming a brick pattern to get the desired height. So uh, this is my pattern. I need to make about 40 of these, give or take. I'm going to make some additional ones because I'll probably screw a couple up. But I'm going to take this pattern here. I'm going to take this piece of poplar and I'm going to cut a bunch of these out. And then after I've got them cut out, I'm going to start putting them on my pattern here. Now I'm going to lay down the first layer, go all the way around, and then cut one of these in half, and then start over here and go up to the next layer, basically forming a pattern of like bricks that go all the way up. Now I need to be at three and a half inches or over three and a half inches. So I'm going to start cutting out these pieces right now and then we'll start putting them on the form. So here's my bricks. I've got about 40 of them. Took a little bit of time on the van saw. And those are going to be laid out like this on here. So the next step is I need to cut these at the right angle so when I butt these up I'll get a nice joint. So what the idea behind this is, is I can take one of my bricks like this, put it on here, cut it, take another one, put it on here, and cut it. And when I put those two together, I'll have a perfect joint that's the right radius. Well, now that I think I've got the right angle, and boy, I hope I do, I can put these pieces on here, start cutting them, and start setting up the first layer of bricks on my template. Well, I think I got lucky, and that angle is right. So this is the first layer. It's actually going to start with a short piece and a full length piece and go all the way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these off of here. I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to clamp it down and then from the underside I'm going to drill a couple screws up in there to hold it in place. When I do that I want to make sure that not only is this edge past this line right here which is actually the cut line for the piece but I'm overhanging this MDF right here because I'm going to use this as a template to pattern route the front of these. So I have that last piece in there and all my joints are nice and tight and I've got a little bit of overhang all the way around on front so that's perfect. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over my router table with the pattern routing bit and trim this flush to the pattern. So I've got a pattern routing bit in my router table here and the bottom bearing is going to ride up against my template and I'm just going to slowly nibble all that away until this is perfectly round. So I've got that routed all nice and smooth and uh, yeah those joints are real nice and tight. So now it's time to put on the second layer. I've got that second layer on. Again, there's just a little bit of overhang. I'm going to give this about 10 minutes to set up, and then I'm going to take it over to the router table 
This time I'm going to flip it upside down like this and then use the top bearing guide to get that flush all the way around. So here's the first two layers all flush trimmed. I have to get a total of five layers on this. By the time I get done it will be about four inches. I need a finished width on this or finished height of three and a half. So I'm going to continue to work on this. So I've got both halves of the skirts out of the clamps now and they're almost four inches. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to take these over the bandsaw and I'm going to cut them down to three and five eighths of an inch. So now that I've got this cut down to three and five eighths, I've got to get the inside of this cleaned up. So I'm going to take my marking gauge here, it's set to three quarters of an inch, and I'm just going to strike a line all the way around this using the front as a guide. Now that I've got that line marked all the way around, I can take this over my oscillating spindle sander and just sand up to that line. The nice thing about this marking, line, marking knife line is when I get close to it, it'll kind of chip off and I'll know I've hit it and I know when to stop. Well, I got the first one done and it's pretty close to three quarters of an inch all the way around. Some places might be a little larger, some places a little bit smaller. That's okay, nobody's ever going to see it and it's really not, not going to affect the joinery at all in this case. I just want to make sure it's smooth on the inside. I'll still hit this with some sandpaper. I just don't want this to be on the inside of the piece for obvious reasons. So here's a template that I use to make the skirt or brick the skirt for the table. Now this line right here represents exactly halfway through. I'm going to cut at that line first. I know I need to cut back three quarters of an inch for the joinery on this. This is the cutoff, another reason to always keep your cutoffs. And I've got some sticky, sticky tape in here. I'm just going to pull this off. So after I've got the cutoff secured to the template, this gives me a really nice straight edge to make this cut right here, which is half of the skirt. Again, later on I'll cut it a little bit shorter, but for now I want to keep it as long as possible because the skirt's going to have a veneer on the face of it and I don't want to have to make it fit exactly before I do the final cut. So I end up cutting three slices of veneer off that board and after running through the drum sander, I'm about 3 64ths of an inch thick, which is plenty bendy enough to get around my skirts. So the reason there's three of them, I want that cathedral going across the middle. I don't want just a straight grain and then have some cathedral on the bottom. I want the straight grain going all the way around. So I'm going to cut away part of this, giving myself three and five eighths here in the middle on two of these. And then the third one I can just cut in half and then use that for the back side. Now that I have that veneer cut, the next thing I need to do is create a jig to hold this piece upright so I can glue the veneer both to the bottom and to the top. So if you remember this piece, this is what I use to make a template for the bricks here. This inside curve is marked right here at 9.75 inch. That's my radius. So I'm going to take three pieces of MDF using that exact same hole, go over my bandsaw, and this is a bandsaw circle cutting jig, and cut these three pieces out at that 9.75 inches. So I've got my bending form here. I took the liberty of mounting it to a base real quick. 
and putting a piece of um, flexible bending ply over it and put some veneer tape, or not veneer tape, but just packing tape over it. I've got my center mark here and I've also got a center mark on this board. I'm just going to lay it over like that. I'm going to pick this up, just push it down right on top of it. Try to keep everything aligned. Take the next piece and put it on there. And again, line up my center mark. And take some blue tape. Try to pin it down at the center as best as I can. All right, so I've got that down now. The thing appears even. I can take it over to my vacuum bag. I've got a plate down here in my vac bag. I'm just going to push this in there, put that about right there. I want to make sure that I can get this flat so I can seam it right, close the bag right. You can hear me or not, but I've got the uh, pump on. I'm starting to draw pressure out of here. We'll let this go until it gets to about 20 to 23 inches of mercury. So the pump stopped right now. It's reading 23 inches of mercury, which is about where I want it. The manufacturer, the adhesive recommends it sits in the clamp for 45 to 60 minutes. I'm going to give it the full 60 minutes, and then we'll take it out and see what this looks like. Well, I've got the first skirt out of the clamps, and it came out really well. I'm really happy with it. The front is perfect. The back, however, because of the inconsistencies of using the oscillating spindle sander, there's a couple little gaps right here and right along here. So I've got my skirt dimensioned correctly. It's almost three and a half inches. It's a little bit fat for right now. And when I cut this, I split that circle in half. I've got to account for the legs and the joiner. The legs are going to be joined by dominoes. So I know the legs are an inch and a half. This line right here represents half the leg. So if I screw this back down and cut at that line, I know I'll have enough room for the legs in the middle. So after I have these aprons cut to their final length, so to speak, they're basically done. Next time I'll be working on the joiner for this. There's some jigs involved. I'm also going to be cutting bridle joints in these. Should be a lot of fun. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. And thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.